Welcome to the Larry Live Show. Today's date is January the 17th of 2024. I want to invite you to this platform where we discuss whatever is in the public and we have a conversation surrounding it. Since we started the conversation here about P. Diddy and Bishop T.D. Jakes, we're going to carry this out every time that there's new development. And today I received a new development. So I'm going to discuss it with you guys. Take a moment right now, hit like and hit share. And we are about to get started. Multimedia personality, comedic commentator, songwriter, recording artist, spiritual leader, author, and actor. Larry D. Reed is the founder of the MBN Network, owner of LDR Enterprises based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and the spiritual leader of the Reformation Church of Atlanta. You can catch Larry Reed on the BET Plus original series, Kingdom Business, and on American Gangsta Trap Queens. Streaming online at BET.plus. Church Critic by Dr. Larry D. Reed. An examination of the Larry Reed Live show perspective. Purchase a copy today by logging on to LarryReadLive.com. That's LarryReadLive.com. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the bell. Text LRL to 404-999-7527. That's the words LRL to 404-999-7527. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon. Log on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Sign up, then download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. Even though he has not always been protected, he's always been a protector. Broken people saw that signal and done what they thought they needed to do to the request that I was making. And they just chose improperly. He never told me nothing. I knew nothing about it. I feel like everyone in my family, in some form or way, has been fondled or molested or raped in some form or fashion. I couldn't understand how God was in me because I was that. There was tolerated versus celebrated. It's a wrong way and right way to do everything, and Larry always seemed to choose the wrong way. <laughs> yes, I was drugged and raped, and that happened when I was 17 years old. Misfits have an ability to stick out. But if the misfit accept that they absolutely cannot fit in, then they become someone with, with an X factor. Patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Let me tell you why you should join. You will gain access to master level teaching and coaching, which includes Sunday morning prayer calls with Dr. Reed, Wednesday night breakdown with Dr. Reed, the prophets and care pastors, divine partnerships and networking with a like minded community, exclusive content, which includes daily posts ranging in topics that are too expensive to share on Dr. Reed's public platform, including money, health and wellness, entrepreneurship, relationships, prophecy, prayer, and more. Become a member today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live today. Join with people from around the world praying 15 minutes every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 667-770-1402, code 974-8029-POUND. Multimedia personality, comedic commentator, songwriter, recording artist, spiritual leader, author, and actor. Larry D. Reed is the founder of the MBN Network, owner of LDR Enterprises based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and the spiritual leader of the Reformation Church of Atlanta. You can catch Larry Reed on the BET Plus original series, Kingdom Business, and on American Gangsta Trap Queens. Streaming online at BET.plus. We're about to have a confidence.
All right, welcome to Larry Live. My name is Larry DeReed, and I'm the host of the Larry Live Show, your most favorite digital entertainment news and talk show that is out here on the social media streets. Now, we discuss here what is being discussed in the community. Now, if you do not like that type of commentary, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to unsubscribe, to unlike, and do not watch. I don't want you to mistake this platform for something that it is not. We do not come up here and break stories, meaning something that has happened in somebody's privacies and it becomes um, public on this platform. No. What happens is somebody's privacies come out public somewhere else. And then what we have designed here is a platform where we can come to the kitchen table as a community and talk about it. And I'll speak of it from my lens. You'll speak about it. Thousands of you in the chat from your lens. And that is something we created years ago. And as a result, this platform has become the come to go to place when it comes to certain conversation around certain topics, especially if it's a black industry topic, particularly in the religious sector. People come here to find out all of the nuts and bolts. And sometimes people trust me enough to sit down with me and tell you directly Many times, most of the time, people speak with me off camera. Then I come here and I tell you what they said. So if you don't like that kind of commentary, you can leave here. If it feels as though it's barring you down and making you feel negative or having you question certain people and whatever, okay, then maybe this isn't for you. But this is for those of us who do not mind sharing our opinion. And then when we have facts and truths, we don't mind calling a thing a thing. We can love. Whoever it is that we are discussing and benefit from their gift or their ministry or their talent or their contribution, and we can still call a thing a thing. So this platform is going to be a little bit different than other platforms. There's some other great integral platforms, but there's so many raggedy, no good, sorry, oh my God, platforms that are out there who are not even qualified to talk on certain topics because they have no knowledge, they have no type of experience or education in that world. But here, when it comes to gospel artists, when it comes to pastors, when it comes to preachers, business owners, influencers, actors, see, I'm all those things, author, dad, there's so many things that go on and on and go on and on. So this is, I think that's the, the secret sauce over here is that we're having a conversation, but there's a lot of intelligence and experience, experiential knowledge that goes into the conversation. Today, the topic that we're going to be discussing is none other than Bishop T.D. Jakes. Why? Because he has been pulled into the media by way of P. Diddy. I can't help but think about how their relationship is going and how the text messages are, are are going between them two in phone calls because if T.D. Jakes was never, ever, ever publicly seen with P. Diddy at his parties or however they would meet up, there's so many Getty images and then regular images in Google. When you click for videos and photos, you'll see them together. If he had never did any of those things, he would not be a topic of discussion. Let me tell you why. The main reason why is because Bishop T.D. Jakes' contribution to the church, to the community, has been so huge that if there has been any experience that anybody has had privately, maybe even publicly, like we saw between him and Juanita Bynum, they're quick to fix it. She was quick to apologize. He gave her a platform. She apologized, dropped to her knees. Or either behind the scene, they will work this thing out. Because Bishop T.D. Jakes, let's be very clear, is the golden calf of the black Christian, maybe even white evangelical Christian community. He was passed a baton from Billy Graham as America's pastor. And these speculations that have came public now in a very secular way were already rumored and talked about in our community, but it would have never been addressed on a platform um, like this or bigger. It just wouldn't have been discussed because it's Bishop T.D. Jakes. But it's almost like the universe spinned and spinned and spinned. So you know what? Since none of you guys are going to have the conversation 
about what you're having the conversation about in green rooms and you're having the conversation at dinners and parties and the preachers and the gospel artists are having conversations and you're never going to go to his office, call him up and address these things, then I know what I'm going to do. I am going to use the PD and Cassie case and I am going to drag him out in the media and put the spotlight on him to where now you can have the conversations. That's how I see it. That's how I see it. That the church doesn't do a real good job with having certain conversations around certain things and certain people. And so we do this thing where out of sight, out of mind, don't ask no questions, it's okay. And that isn't the time that we are in now. Let me tell you about this time we're in. There's a particular planet now, dwarf planet, I believe they have agreed it is, that significantly affects planet Earth, particularly America. And whenever this planet goes into certain movements, there are catastrophic, monumental things that happen in America. And this planet is Pluto. Pluto was about to go in a position and in a posture called Aquarius. Well, Jesus made a comment about the boy with the water, if you meet him, follow him in the house. Let me tell you what that house represents, because Aquarius is the young boy with the water picture pouring upon the earth. It represents enlightenment. It represents deep, deep introspection inside of the person that caused you to come forth with a clarity of your identity, your purpose, and who you are. It also demands that things come up to be uncovered, discovered, ultimately for us to upgrade in consciousness and in awareness and in our systems and our ways and methodology. So Aquarius is doing a great thing. And the tremors of Aquarius started about three, four years ago. And the pandemic of 2020 was a tool of Aquarius to bring us into another form, into another posture, into another position, a consciousness operation. This is where the brick and mortar became out of order and now click in order is the new order. This is where we begin to come into the metaverse, into the digital space, into this new time. All of this is the working of Aquarius. Now, let me know how you feel about it. I already know how some of you feel about it. I watched the comment section. Some of you love it. Some of you pastors fussing about having to build online. You'd rather be in person. I, I see even some of the entrepreneurs, no longer your brick and mortar business is doing that well. Now you went online and you missed the engagement with the people. So many of us are struggling with this new time, new era, new epoch. However, we just need to all get with the program because we're in an entirely different space and place. With this comes even the counterfeit, listen to me, wherever there is a counterfeit, wherever there is something subpar, wherever there is something that is out of whack, out of kilter, when something is unhealthy and not well, all of these things are going to come up for us to address, particularly the artificial. The artificial that is causing harm to ourselves, harm to our bodies, even in the foods, harm to um, every area of our life. There's also the artificial that is intelligence, AI. So you see how all of this is happening at this time, all these wonderful, great things and not so great things all at the same time. But it's all to bring us into upgrade new money new ways of living, new food, new ways of preaching the message, new ways of demonstrating the message, new ways of learning. All of this, I don't have time to tell you, but my community knows, and I call it my community, but it's really a community that, that spirit formed out of this community. And I want to invite you over to it. It's called Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Larry Reed Live. And over there, we are an empowerment community empowering women, empowering the disenfranchised and educating them. All different types and kinds of people are there. I mean, 
all types. And I mean, I know people say that, and they say their ministry is is diverse and multicultural, and it ain't no for real. Over there, there's there's everybody over there, and many different cultures and spiritual practices. But we unite around good God and Jesus. So I want to invite you over to Patreon, P A T R N dot com slash Larry Live. We meet every Sunday, every Wednesday, and then we engage all week long. Tonight at seven p.m., I will be over there answering your questions from the coaching on Sunday. And also answering the questions that you may have as it relates to the show I'm doing tonight or anything that you want to know. We open it up for 45 minutes. You just post your question. We star them and then we answer them. It's not just me, but also my team of virtual prophets, counselors and coaches. All right. So we are about to get started in this conversation. I, I don't plan to be for you long. Now, you do know, we, we, you know, a lot of time when. Um, pastors, preachers, they, they say that and then they turn into this long, drawn out thing. I'm going to do my best not to do that because I got to talk some more at 7 o'clock inside of Patreon. Okay. So here we go. For those of you that do not know, P. Diddy and Cassie... Mm, Jesus, land. For those of you that do not know, P. Diddy and Cassie lawsuit begin a conversation around the acquaintances and even business acquaintances of P. Diddy. He paid or settled it within 24 hours, which made people believe that he was guilty. That's improper to think, but that's what people think. And since then, every relationship that P. Diddy has had musically with his label, with his businesses, and platonic and spiritual have came into play. And that's where Bishop T.D. Jakes comes in at. It's very unfortunate that he was pulled into this and what was said was believed without evidence. It's unfortunate. And I want everybody to hear me when I say that. Everybody tells a convincing story. Can you put that in the chat? Everybody tells a convincing story. And I want you to remember that. When people have had an experience... No matter what that experience is and whether or not it is actual or perceived, they have feelings about it. So when they talk about it, their story is always convincing. But what I saw happen to Bishop T.D. Jakes, I've seen happen to other people. It has happened to me. Everybody that's in the public eye and done anything significant, all world changes are going to have accusations that seem or feel convincing. Everybody tells a convincing story. So when this first came out, I'm like, you know, this, I mean, this is just conjecture. I shared it and talked about it saying the only reason why that I'm sharing this is because it's so viral and people want to know what I think. I think it's bullshit. That's what I said. But then I made another statement. I said, however, there is some truth to this. So then everybody got very inquisitive about the truth. I was not going to tell the truth. I didn't articulate that truth that I knew, has seen with my own eyes. I just held it. I then came back live and I said to Bishop Jakes and his team through the camera, I said, you know, trade very lightly, trade very carefully. I really expected them to not say anything. Anybody that knows that camp know that Jake's never addressed anything. We had already seen earlier this year where he addressed something for the first time over the pulpit. At least it seems as though he did around the Carlton Pearson death. And this, I just knew. Okay, then I don't know. By him responding to that, he got in a responding mood. I don't know. But the next thing I know, and I read it to you, Christian Post posted this story surrounding Jake's and then Jake spoke through his team. What he said through his team was idiotic. He shouldn't have said anything. Jake's brand was strong enough to do exactly what he told us in those meetings years ago as pastors. He told us when people are talking, that's what they're supposed to do. And you just stay quiet and let them do what they do. However, for some reason, he did not 
want to stay quiet on this, which leads me to believe that there's some deal, maybe it's with um, a network or a bank, there's something that was on the table and they needed him to deny because it was foolish for him to do it. Shouldn't have done it. It was a setup, in my opinion. I read it to you and I called it dumb and foolish after it was all over with. Then, days later, the team got even more idiotic and they allowed, and yes, I'm saying allowed, you say, well, Larry, we can't control Jake's. Hell, if you can't, you can turn mics off and cut streaming. He went live on his platform and said, all of it is a lie. I made a post immediately after. He said some other things in that speech that was concerning. If I did do it, I just repent. I'm not guilty of that. And then he said, um, freaks. He called people with sexual other appetites freaks. For me, when it hit my ears, it sounded like the, the forbidden F word in the gay community. It was not a good statement to me. And I posted and I said, uh-oh, this is a problem. Because now anybody that has actually been harmed by him, anybody that used to work for him that is disgruntled, enemies and liars, maybe past lovers, they're all going to feel a certain kind of way because of the way he spoke. It wasn't even 48 hours. Manasseh Jordan took to his IG and began to talk about Jake's without using his name. So when I saw that, now mind you, I'd already knew about it. I'd already been over there to the place, look at the computer, stealing screenshots. <laughs> and that was probably over a year ago. And when he done what he done, I said, now Manasseh, I'm going to tell you what I'm about to do. I guess I was asking and also letting him know. I'm going to put this up and I'm going to put Jake's name on this. When I do this, this is going to breathe fire back into this conversation about Jinx that he's trying to disappear, but it will also create a conversation around predatory grooming that needs to be had. Manasseh's a prophet. He works with people, prophesies to people, and works in the kingdom, the body of Christ, the church, religious sector. And he said, okay, that conversation is more important than protecting anyone. So I put his name on it, and I began to do a few lives. Later on, Manasseh named him by saying TD. Then later on, all of these other people began to come to me. One of these people, his story is so heart-wrenching that I know if those details come out here on this internet, just his story, this is going to be, it's going to be horrible. So I sent his name to the Jenks camp and said, y'all need to get in contact with him. And sometimes when that happened, people get clear, even if the person actually really harmed them and it's not just a baseless accusation. I was hoping that just get worked out because I didn't want to see it out here. Although this is my job doing this type work, having these conversations, it's not my, my main job. So I cannot do this anymore. So if I can keep it off the internet, I will. I just done this with a woman that was accusing John Gray, who's now went to another blogger to have that conversation. I was working with her for a month. She just sat down with this other blogger about five days ago. I do this type of work behind the scene. There's another situation, a young man that has accusations. I'm going to go ahead and call their name against Creflo Dollar. And I, guised, I, I disguised Creflo Dollar's name. And I said a man, mega pastor in Atlanta with a jet. But I was talking about Creflo Dollar. So I... Work behind the scene. I'm not going to tell you what I did, <laughs> but I worked behind the scene to get them on the phone two days ago. 
So, I move like that behind the scene because I'm in love with the church. I'm in love with preachers, gospel artists. What we do, I think the church is a beautiful thing. Knees reformed and ugly in parts. But I, I love our community. It's home for me. It's where I come from. It's where my star rises from. So I love it. So I don't like this, but I know it is necessary to a, a great end. So I passed his name. And far as I know of about four days ago, he hadn't been contacted. I think that's dumb, T.D. Jake's team. I think you need to get in contact with him and you need to talk to him. This is dumb because if he does what I have been told he is going to do now, and let me say this, it's one of the things I came live to say. Manasseh Jordan has finally found a proper team of lawyers for this, because this is a specialized situation, and 100% moving forward. If you watch me, you know that I was sort of tossed between two minds as it relates to that. But listening to, and I did speak with him, listening to what he said, I think is what he needs to do especially in the ministry aspect, what he's trying to do is to pull the cover on all predatory grooming that happens in the church across the stage. But if this man, and I already gave, I'm going to say D.Y., so you know who I'm talking about, Jake's Tink. I know y'all watch, and you should. You need to tell Jakes to call D.Y. instantly and have a conversation absolutely if you can make it happen. Because that does not need to marry itself to Manasseh's case. Because let me tell you what's going to happen. I really done did this before. What's going to happen is Depending on the kind of case it is, because everybody thinks you can subpoena people into stuff. You can't always, that ain't always, depends on what kind of case it is. And if lead attorney or Pam the intellect watching and I say something off legally, put it in my chat. I won't be upset. Y'all the people with jurist doctorates. I'm my doctor is doctor of ministry. <laughs> so if <coughs> I say something wrong, please put it in there. Now, and watch it for Nancy if they say I did something wrong. Okay, so if he if he contacts Manasseh's lawyer and tells his story, she or he, because a team of lawyers that Manasseh has, is going to subpoena him to pad the case. What you mean pad the case? I'm not talking about with untruth. I'm I'm saying that reiterates and shows the pattern and the character, not just of Bishop T.D. Jakes, but of the entire organization about 20 years ago. And in certain states, when it comes to a clergyman, and I'm sad to report that in Texas is one of those states, there is no statute of limitation. So then it just puts more information out that, in my opinion, ain't nobody business. Larry, you saying they need to hide a crime? No, I didn't say it was a Listen, if you're dealing with two people over the age of 18 that are men, I don't, and everybody's clear, I can't call that a crime because you, you pass that age of consent and you're no longer a minor. However, I do believe that predatory grooming can happen at 38, at 28, at 58 even. And that needs to be a discussion. It's unethical, but it's civil. It may feel crim criminal. Spiritually, it's criminal. But as relates to the law, it really is not. 
So, it, but if he bring that information in there, he says the grooming started at 15 and they didn't have sexual situation until 19. But still, the point is, it just makes the story more dirty. So just stop that. So call D.Y. and have a conversation. I think a conversation can work. Well, Larry, you know, his voice needs to be heard. Who, who, who he need to talk to, really? T.D. Jenkins. That's it. That's what the problem. Him, T.D. Jenkins, the therapist, God, maybe a coach or a spiritualist. That's it. We don't really need to have to be involved, if you ask me. Will it become a juicy and just shocking story on that? Absolutely, because he done told me. What I believe is everything. If there's anything more, I just can't take it. Keep it. Don't ever tell me, D.Y. Well, I don't even want to know. I, I, can't, I can't even take no more. Then there are others. <clears throat> and I told y'all this. The other one won't even talk to me. He only would talk, a, talk to a lawyer. But I could text him the name of a lawyer if I wanted to be involved at that level. But I don't. Now, I'm just telling you what the truth is. If he asks, of course, I'm going to connect him to somebody. But I don't really want to be involved like that. I want y'all to figure it out on your own. When it hit online, I see it, then I'm going to talk about it. Other than that, I don't want to fool up with it like that. And I told you there was another person. So now I'm going to tell you who that person is without saying his name. But I'm going to say it in a way to where Jake's community, his team, know exactly who I'm talking about so you can make a call. Because let me tell you this. I thought D.Y.'s conversation was troubling too much. But... This other person's conversation, it, sh it paints Bishop T.D. Jakes in such a, it paints Bishop T.D. Jakes as a greedy, unkind, mean, self-centered, self-absorbed predator. And to me and for me, I think that's worse. When you paint somebody like that. At this point, none of us should be bothered when we find out anybody we look up to like a little pink every now and again. We, we really shouldn't. I mean, that's the world we live it in. You can throw your Bibles. You can say this ain't right. It's sin. It's abomination. Fine. After you do all that, guess what? Folks sitting on pins and sticking them in their mouth right early. So you preaching all of that ain't going to change what folk doing. So let's talk about what folk are doing and let's see if we can set some parameters, some order, and some integrity around it. That's the best thing we can do is have a conversation about it because you preaching on it ain't stopped. The hell, the man preaching it is frucking and sitting and sucking, gobbling peens his darn self. So what's the point? So let's put that over there and let's deal with humanity and what's, and what's really going on. So that's not the problem for me. And I speak for me. I speak for my community that has all different types of people in it. That's not a problem. The problem comes in when it's this predatory kind of behavior. Now, I know people make mistakes. I know, Pastor, you watching me. You're nervous because you fruct your secretary. And y'all been doing it for three, four years. And you married like Jake's is. Or maybe you're not married. And you just got a lot of bodies out there. You don't know because of the time we're in. And I'm telling you, it's possible. If these people are going to come up or they're going to speak, if they're going to come up and share your story, so I know you're a little nervous. Let me say this to you. Get rid of the nervousness and get real transparent and get in front of your own story. How? By telling all your business. Then, let me tell you how this works. And I've been doing this at 16, so you might need to listen to me. If you go ahead and tell your own truth, we're talking about the root. When you're not going to tell all, all your relationships, but go to the root. The root is I'm married, but I like a harem. Tell that truth. 
The real truth is I'm married, but I like a little pink every now and again. Or if you're a woman, I like a little puss every now and again. Whatever. Share it. And put, that's what we the bottom. Juanita Bottom. They were about to out Juanita Bottom. I won't never forget this. This was 2000 and oh Jesus. I was in Cary at the time. Whatever year that was, 2009, 10. She called into that major radio station right before somebody was about to out her for being with women. And she said, yeah, I've been with women before. After she did that, all the way up to this day, that doesn't matter anymore. Not that people think, do not think it's abomination or wrong, but because she done said it. So if we find out that, some, that she fraught a young lady we we'll be like, oh, well, she had already told us that, she, you know, like a little puss every now and again. So we we clear. So pastor, let me get back to talking to pastor. Look, just go ahead and have the come. I ain't tell you get on the internet and do it unless you need to. We got so many bodies, but you need to go right on ahead and have the conversation about your truth that can come up in Aquarius some kind of way. Let me tell you why you need to do that. Because somebody possibly going to bring it out. And number two, folk like the lie. See, when you go ahead and tell your folk the truth, your community the truth, take it from me because I know 2019, December and January, December of December and January of 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, a, a storm hit the internet on YouTube about me. Every year, every single year it happened. I haven't did nothing but grown. You know why? Because my community knows me and I tell too much of my business. So when somebody's talking something that they ain't heard me say, when they know what I told them is horrible already or taboo, and then you come and you adding this on it and that, they don't care. They don't even believe it. Because you've already been honest. So I'm talking to pastors. I need to be talking to Hollywood producers. I need to be talking to politicians. Oh, my Jesus. Because you guys, this story runs into all of this. It runs into politics. Which I got to be a little careful, you know, I had to get a next level of security to start messing with politicians. <laughs> but... It goes into politics. It, it goes out of the church and into government politics, into finance and health care. Corruption. But let me get back over here to Jake's because I ain't got the grace for all of that. So, so, see, I won't fool up with that. I won't be able to go nowhere. So tell the story and tell your truth. That's number one. And I've been saying that. As it relates to Jake's phone, how long? Just come out here and tell us. Like a little pink every now and again. Holds, it dismantles this whole thing. No, like, okay. So if a if a guy comes out and say they've been with Jake, like, well, yeah, we know because he said, you know, he like a little pain every 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 now and again. It, it just take that out of it. But as long as you sit in a lie, and God knows, Jenks, you've had so many years to tell us that truth. As long as you sit like that in a lie, you really just put a target on your back and give such an opportunity to your haters, your liars, former disgruntled employees, and all. Don't um, take my advice and do something about this really quick. Okay, so let me tell you about this other guy I mentioned that I didn't give a name, but I'm going to give his first letter of his name so that Jake's team can know exactly what to do before midnight. In 2019, I began a little short series, more so it was in Patreon. I started it out here, and I talked about it's all coming out of Texas. I want everybody to type that. Let me tell you why. Because if the team does not handle this correctly, this story is going to be bigger than Eddie Long, and you are going to see an operation that stretches all over our country. 
in the black community, black church. And read what you mean we say operation, meaning Jake's got his boys. This is this is just hypothetical. Jake's got his boys. The biggest pastor in DMV got his boys. The biggest pastor in Atlanta got his boys. The biggest pastor in California got his boys. The biggest in Washington State got his boys. The biggest in Houston got his boys. And then that connects to the, the, the pastor that is huge in Illinois who got his girls. And then the pastor in Dakota that got his girl. And they all friends and swapping. I think just then I made it clear to y'all what I'm talking about. I think I did. I do a good job, Nancy. I think I did. Now, so this is the reason why Jake's team can't handle this like you just protecting Jake's. You have to handle this with Jake's with the mindset that you are protecting the black church exposure across the globe. That's how you have to handle this. Why? Because what y'all just typed, it's all coming out of Texas. Do we need to take a breath? <sighs> okay, everybody take a breath. Because <sighs> there's a third layer to that. Because you got the women and their girls, the female apostles and bishops and, and pastors that have their girls. Oh my. I know y'all thought they were prayer groups. No. I know y'all thought it was a prayer band. Yeah, they were praying, but they were also licking and splitting. And who they calling mom is the one they turn that turned them out. <clears throat> oh Lord, this is getting a little bit heavy. I wasn't gonna say all this. Let me get to my topic. Okay, there's 6,227 of y'all watching between YouTube and Facebook. I need all of you to hit like and share. And I want you to get in the conversation in the chat, okay? Okay, so, all right. Now, so in 2019, uh, Lord, please guide my mouth. In 2019, I started talking about it's all coming out of Texas. How did this happen? There was a picture, an alleged picture, that was leaked of Pastor Keon Henderson. Now, let me go ahead and tell you, at the time he was my client, so I asked him and he 100% denies this and said it's not true. So let's make that very clear. He said, out the horse's mouth, that's a lie. I don't have anything except that picture that can say opposite. Anybody who saw the picture know it looked like him with his normal do-rag on, sitting in front of FaceTime with his whole peen in his hand. So I asked him about that and he said it was not true. I came up here and I told y'all it wasn't true and that disappeared it. Until recent. Um, when that happened, it created a, a conversation amongst vloggers. Some of us was talking during that time. And it created a conversation amongst vloggers about the entire Jake's operation. Mind you, at the same time this was happening, there was a former Potter's House T.D. Jakes Enterprises, one of them, employee by the name of Darrell Patrick. Darrell Patrick was a pastor in Mississippi. I think it was Mississippi, somewhere in the dirty, dirty. And ultimately, I want to call that pastor name. I know his name. He don't want to be connected to it. But through him, he was at that event. And he ended up talking to Jakes at the dinner table and found out that he's great with event planning. So he first connected to Jake's in that aspect, but then it ultimately turned into him being his stylist. Y'all remember when Jake's attire changed from him dressing like Harvey? Um, what was what's his um, spiritual father name? Is it Harvey or no Watkins? I think it's his name. 
from dressing like Watkins, was basically like a pimp from the country. And he went to dressing very nice. And y'all saw it happen overnight. That was all 100% Darrell Patrick. Same time when we began the Gideon Project. Every pastor, young person who could preach and was anointed and look half like something was approached at that time to be a part. I was approached. Then I was approached later on for the above 40. Patar, uh, maybe that's what it was called. I'm going off memory. If y'all in the chat, you remember, put it in the chat. And Sherman Watkins, I said Harvey. Harvey Watkins is head of uh, Canton, Sp Canton Spirituals. I got to clean up. <laughs> What I messed up, and um, but it's it's Sherman. So anyway, oh, I get up on that. What was I talking about? Oh God, I don't need to get out of my flow. Okay, so Darrell was highly involved in the Gideon Project. Let me tell you about that. I have to say this about that because I had the thought then. Now I'm sort of looking at my thought like you might be on this of them. I remember during that time. All the boys, and but these were not minors, but all the boys who were going, I was looking like, wait a minute. Mm. <laughs> is this a pride meeting or is this the Gideon Project? I mean, I mean, I said, this, this is looking a certain kind of way. But anyway, that, according to Darrell Patrick, who's now deceased, we can't dig him up and ask, he says that was his brainchild. Jake's was the figurehead. But Jake's began to meet a whole lot of different people during that time. Darrell and Keon had an exchange that did not go well, according to, to Darrell. Because Darrell will let you know what he liked when he liked it. And, uh, and allegedly, and apparently, he was saying gender loving. So, Keon allegedly was not with it and told Jakes. The story goes that that's the reason why Darrell Patrick was fired, kicked off the plane, and then he started texting Jakes. And what he was texting went to his iPad. Sarah Jakes had it. Went and showed Sarita because of the nature of the text. I was told today that those are two separate things. That he got in trouble. But then also the text that went to the iPad that Sarah saw and, and Sarita saw that was actually when Darrell, Patrick, and Jace was on good terms and the conversation was improper. And Sarah saw it, told her mom, and that's when Darrell no longer, because if you go back, y'all can, can verify what I'm saying. You go back, whenever you see Jace, you saw Darrell. Even if you want Sunday morning Potter's house, because I was at that time, Darrell was sitting right beside him, standing right beside him. When Tyler Perry laid hands and gave the million dollars to Jakes, Darrell caught him. So you can go and research what I'm saying. It's not that I'm making it up. And if there's Darrell Patrick friends and associates in the chat, tell these people that what I'm saying is the absolute truth. Hell, if you were one of the pastors on the phone call that time after he got fired and he was telling Y'all, because I was on that call, patched in, telling y'all everything that him and Jakes had done, and even saying that his breadbasket um, hole was full of gray hairs like his beard. That's why, if it's a lie, Darrell Patrick told it, because I, I don't have no way of knowing. I would never have any way of knowing. <laughs> I would never, ever, never, ever, never, 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 ever, never, ever, never, ever, 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 have any way of knowing. No. Lord Jesus, hell no. Anyway, so when he had that conversation with us, he disclosed some things and then let us know, okay. All right, this is the situation. Long story short, 
Now I want this. I want somebody to, to try to say I'm lying about this. Y'all been not met. I, Lord Jesus, because I, I got proof of this one. Um, basically, negotiations were done, and he came back to getting this check. Pastors, what can we learn from this? Oh Jesus! Now folk gonna lie. Former employees gonna lie. They're gonna make up stuff. Ex-lovers going to lie and make up stuff. You probably got lovers you don't even know you had. They were in love with you. But make sure that you are not dropping these people and dropping them in a way to where they can't eat. That's all I'm going to say about that. But that's what I want every pastor and maybe every married man that's cheating. I am not promoting that, but I'm just saying. You can't just drop folk because that thing going to come up. It may be 10 years from now. Don't do that because they, the pain that they experience from being dropped is very imaginative. <laughs> the pain that they experience for being dropped gets very imaginative, backed up by all of their emotions from being dropped, and they start telling stories. And everybody's story is, is convincing. So how about just keep yourself from that? Anyway, so now how much do I need to tell? I had a conversation in 2019. All right, I'm going to say this, then I'm gone. I had a conversation with someone that alleged that they were in a very emotional, predominantly emotional, but not entirely, Relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes. Now, I already know because of Darrell Patrick. I knew their first and last name because of Darrell Patrick, who is deceased, who we can't dig up and ask him nothing. And I understood that if, now this is all alleged, this part right here, because from what I understood from Darrell, that if he did not get back on and was not handled properly, that he had a plan of outing that relationship. So that's how come I knew who this person was. Although I can't believe I just told that. I didn't even tell the person that. Oh, okay. So I told the person it's just my nature, y'all. My cousin tell you in, in the thing I played earlier that I'm a protector. I told the person, I said, listen here. You need to do whatever you need to do to protect yourself. Because if this lie is told on you or this scheme is used to get Jake's and it hit you, you might be in danger or in trouble. You need to watch yourself. The person listened to me, never forgot my phone call, never forgot that exchange, and watched me from 2019 all the way to 2024 on January the 17th, never tell their story. I want y'all to listen to that. Now, people in my life know me, but y'all don't know me. I can know something and I can hold it for 20 years and I will put it up my head like I don't even know it and it come up when I need it or if you need it. So I never said it. I never mentioned it. Let it, let it be. In Patreon, we had the conversation. In Patreon, I put up the pictures. They're not up there no more, so don't join my Patreon looking for all this mess. My Patreon's entirely empowerment, prayer, prophecy, you know, the stars, the mother mysticism all day long. So don't so don't go over there looking for it. It's all been deleted. They remembered how I handled them and that I jumped in to help them. So they called me today. And they gave me permission to say certain things. And I told them why I was going to say them. And the reason why I'm saying these things, I got a few more stuff to say, 
is because I want Bishop T.D. Jake's team who actually needs to be fired and know you can't hire me. I want you guys to stop this. Let me tell you how you're going to stop this. Now, I'm going to tell you all some stuff. I ain't going to tell you everything. You need to call him before 12 midnight. You need to call him. You need to find out what he wants. When I say what he wants, I mean what will make him feel complete? What will make him feel heard? Well, Larry, what did Jakes do to him? Let me tell you. So, when Manasseh went live and did that clip about predatory grooming, and then I covered the topic. Y'all remember I covered the topic? Do y'all remember? I covered the topic. And then I put up one piece of evidence of predatory and inappropriate behavior between Jakes and Manasseh. Now, I seen everything, but I only snatched a few things. And when I put this clip up that showed that Jakes texted him May 26 of 2016 at 2.33 a.m. and said, thinking of you with his chest flexed you see his hands his hands is balled up and he's flexing his chest to stand up you see that and said thinking of you at 2 33 a.m that reminds you of this right here in the same color and everything when this happened he looked at the date and he was like why are you thinking of him when we are in an emotional relationship, you have convinced me to not be in relationship with the other men in my life because he's same, same gender loving and out since the third grade. And you're calling me with I'm with some people I'm trying to date all times of the night. I'm standing on the phone with you for hours and hours and hours and hours. We are meeting each other need emotionally, predominantly, keyword, predominantly emotionally. And why are you reaching out to Manasseh? So then he, that's right, somebody said jealous. Well, I'm not going to say jealous. I am going to say betrayal. Why are you reaching out to him? And you told me that Manasseh I'm seeing him show up at church and sit on the front row at these conferences and on Sunday morning. How is it you telling me he just come to church and he just around, but you texting him at 2.33, that's our hours, saying you thinking of him with your chest flexed. And this is the, uh, the same time we're dealing. So when he called me today, he wanted more receipts and I obliged. And he realized that this was an overlap and now he feels manipulated and betrayed because he put his life on hold and listen to this, hold your wig. This is a 17 year relationship. Let me get some water. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I said, ugh, Jesus. So then he wanted to know things. And I shared those things, but I'm not going to share them now because I think it's a breach of the confidentiality between me and Manasseh. And Manasseh is fouling. And all of what I keep alluding to that Manasseh said the other conversations and the other texts. I seen one. I actually, I actually saw this text that's terribly inappropriate. All of that's going to be in the fouling. So I don't have to say it. What would be the point of me saying it? Just to have get numbers up here and y'all take clips and it's not that important to me. But 
I shared these things that Manasseh told me. And he began to compare with his relationship with Jake's and he felt betrayed. Now, you say what you want to say. Well, he ought to feel he was betraying Sarita. Well, it ain't that ain't quite that. Mm, that's gonna have to come out later on. Somebody said, at least they send us the letter. No, I'm not doing that. And he be, I could hear in his voice as we were talking, he was getting more clear. And more, he said, now wait, so I have missed out on living and the best years. Come on, y'all. I'm touching my arms and my chest. That still look good at about to be 46. But he's a, a gym rat like Manasseh is. So he's he's got all these muscles. But you know, your muscles look different in your 30s and 40s than they do in your 20s. He said, I wasted my best years and probably missed some great relationships because I was making sure I was there for him emotionally. He, this is what he said. He said, I thought I was the only one. Now, he knows now some things, but at the time, he didn't know. So now he feels betrayed. He feels wrong. He now feels as though he was preyed upon, that he was groomed to emotionally meet a need, but because he did not want to do a particular sexual act with Bishop T.D. Jakes, that's what he said, that he feel like that he, Jakes didn't have that part met, so he was trying to find it in Manasseh. Because if you would take, and y'all see Manasseh with his shirt off on this IG stories, go ahead and follow him. I know y'all like to see nakedness. Prophet Manasseh on IG. And then you take the pictures I got of him. And I know him, if he listening, he said, what you mean pictures of me? You know, people talk, and you, everybody ain't your friend. I got all your pictures too. I have got a picture of your pain. They, they look the same with muscles and chest, they both. In fact, he was talking to me today. He was in the gym. That, that is a, it's a. You definitely can see that Jake's has a type. And so he's going through what gifts did. And so I start testing my nest. I didn't hide it from him. I said, "Did he get this?" That's what he asked me. So my question to Manasseh would be, "Did you ever receive?" And I was said in a way to where I'm not letting Manasseh know what he's saying he got, but I'm telling Manasseh that this is what's happening. He, what he described he got is the very same thing that the guy got. And what the guy say he got is the very same thing, same color that Manasseh got. I said, you know what? I'm on my phone like this. I said, Dow. So then, as we continue to talk, he began to talk about how his life has been since then and the different things he's done. He's now a father. He has a child that's four years old. And he's doing well in business. This is a very affluent man, just like Manasseh. Smart young people. And he says this. Now, this is what became the clincher. He said, is there a way that you can get me and Manasseh to meet and I want to speak with his lawyer? And can you add my predatory grooming and what was done to me can I be a part of what's happening? I said, you know what? The only thing I can do <laughs> is give contact. After that, I don't want nothing to do with it. And then I told him what I was going to do today. Now, let me tell you the issue with Jake's team, listen to me. You better take this seriously. Because y'all didn't contact D.Y. 
And I told y'all. And I know why y'all think you don't have the contact D.Y. So let me tell y'all something about D.Y. I ain't going to say it exactly what it is. But D.Y. record just ain't clean. I'm just going to put it like that. So there's a way. Like they're doing Manasseh now. When these people are covering the topic. They're punching holes in his character because he had that whole robocalling thing. Which in my opinion, yeah, that's a thing. But it ain't got nothing to do with being a victim of predatory grooming and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Blah, 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 blah. Ain't got, the two don't even go. So a good lawyer could just disappear that in court. But the DY has, it's not as clean nose. But if Manasseh's lawyer during the trial, you know, getting ready for the trial, would subpoena character witnesses that tell their same story that mirrors Manasseh's story, that's going to be a problem. The jury is going to be convinced. Because why? Everybody tells a convincing story. So the jury is going to be convinced of whatever D.Y. say. I don't care if you poke holes into his charges. And they're going to believe what? Let me see. I'm going to give him a name. Joshua. That ain't his name. But the but the but that part, y'all just tell Jake to tell you truth. He knew who I'm talking about. 17 years. I'm going to say Houston. Huh? And Houston, Texas, that is. If he, because his nose is clean, 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 clean. If these folks start, and then the other one that won't talk to me only talk to look, that's four. It's like I'm missing somebody. That would connect with this is when I tell you this is Eddie Long all over again. This that will, that will connect with what Manasseh is going to do because it's already a lot. Just, just wait for that. That's probably gonna that's gonna happen before. January 31st comes. So just get ready for me to come live again and talk about this one more time, at least one more time this month. That's going to be a whole problem. Let me tell you why. Because right now, the story is just on YouTube. It's just on certain IG social media sites and TikTok by the multiple millions, though. But everybody knows about it. Y'all, everybody. Everybody knows about it. But they're waiting for the story to be told by Manasseh through a credible platform. And let me explain that. Larry, your platform is credible. They all know that. That's why everybody repeat my story, you know, and, and take my hell. Just do just go to my profile as an actor. You see, my platform is platform for a reason everywhere. But just like these other platforms, TMG, Shayram, and um, Jasmine Brand, huh? Didn't I say TMZ? What did I say? TM what? TMG, TMZ. Uh, you know, it's not it's not official until it's Fox, CNN, MSNBC. Then that's where we're gonna have the problem. And ladies and gentlemen, I prophesy when Manasseh filed that lawsuit. I'm going to go ahead and tell you how I know. When Manasseh filed that lawsuit, NBC, CBS, the papers out of New York, out of Washington, every major, I'm going to throw the Christian Post in there, everybody is going to run this story. Somebody said it's official when it's on TMZ. No, it ain't. Once that happened, that's a wrap. Now, apparently and allegedly, Manasseh's already been asked, what do you want? And, and thrown eight, nine, eight digits at him. Manasseh said clearly over and over, don't ask me how I knew. There is no money amount. 
I do not want a dime. Y'all, Manasseh don't need a dime. But I don't want a dime. And then he told me what he want. Y'all gonna be able to read it because it's gonna be in the um filing. You 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 hear in the filing what I have said and more. <laughs> but you will be hearing it from Manasseh through his through the lawyers. So at that point, now granted, a complaint is just a complaint. A complaint is just a story, and it cannot be the true or legitimate. However, sometimes it is a look into the truth. That's why we believe P. Diddy is guilty, and we believe that he was wrong because this, I forgot her thing, her, her um, complaint was 30 or 70 pages, something like that. Um, we just believe that that's the truth. But a complaint don't mean, it's just like getting online and somebody telling their story. You're just doing it through the court, which makes it more official that this is your story, whether it's a lie or not, that you're telling. And Manasseh is going to tell his story through the complaint with receipts you have not seen on my platform because I don't think it's my place to put it out. And I don't want to put it out because it's just on the internet as gossip. But through the court, this is why I've been telling everybody, file. Because through the courts, it makes your story officially told. Don't mean it's the truth, but it makes your story officially told. That's why certain accusations come against me. Larry don't get up here and say something. I did one time, I did, but I took it down. Yes, I did it. I got it in my flesh, but I took it down. But all the rest of the times, I talk through courts. So all, all of you that got something to say about me, you ain't going to never hear me address you. I'm not going to big you up like that. Now, you might get a letter warning you. And if I ever send a cease and desist, you need to be 100% sure that I've already got the lawsuit ready. I'm waiting out the time for you to ignore it so then I can file it against you. And don't think because you have not received the letter from Larry Reed Live, that you okay. I am stealth and I wait years and I'm going to get your ass. So for the first time, Manasseh is going to tell his story in a way that Larry Reed will not tell. Did he tell me? Hell yeah. Do I know? Yep. But it'll just be on the internet and on my show in front of Hundreds of thousands of people. That ain't that serious. But when it's told through the courts or through film, and we see this with TB Joshua on BBC, that's just their story, you guys. I know it, it feels and sounds like the truth. Larry, are you saying they were lying? I ain't said that. But the reality is, did you see any evidence on that three-part series? I didn't. I watched. I didn't see no evidence. I didn't see any, but tears that, you know, felt it was very convincing, but I don't know what the truth is. So there's that. There's 7,526 of you up here. Everybody hit like, go ahead and sign up because within 15 days, I'm going to be back up here. Sign up for the thing where I text you a link and let you know I'm live. Because I'm a, I'm a, as soon as it's fouled, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to tell you. Jake's people, listen to me. You need to call Jake. You need to call Joshua. I almost said the child name. You need to call them and you need to call him now. And you need to have a, before midnight, you listen to me. Call him before midnight. And I'm telling you this for a reason. Call him before midnight. And and create you might need to fly him and Jake's together and let no phones and nothing. Let them work that thing out. Let Jake's explain himself. He wasn't cheating on him or two timing or, or there was no overlap. Whatever lie he gonna tell. I mean, I'm just <laughs> Whatever. 
You need to go ahead. And I'm talking 12 midnight Central Standard Time. Let me say it one more again. T.D. Jakes, folk, call this man before midnight Central Standard Time. Work it out. It don't need to be in the courts. I'm, I, and I know that may sound like, why are you saying that? Uh, mm, mm. It don't need to be in the courts. We don't need to know. Because I'm never going to tell it. And I don't think these people will talk to other outlets. So I'm never going to tell it. So how about not let him tell it? <laughs> Somebody says something in the comment section. This is very interesting to me. I said, they said, Reed, what are you getting out of this? The same thing I've been getting out of doing Larry Live since I started it is the conversation. That's it. Which causes people to expand or upgrade or change their thinking, their belief or behavior. That's it. I don't need, you know, I have turned down so much money. I'm not interested in that. Let's have the conversation. Let's upgrade change. And that's that's good enough for me. Ain't nothing else we need. I would love to see, absolutely love to see, Jake's become so transparent and honest and say, you know what? Let me go ahead and dis disappear this. Y'all, I have not been a perfect man. You can keep it very vague for church people. The pew is the dumbest space in America, the pew. And you can say, I haven't been a perfect man, and there's some things I need to work on. I need to acknowledge some things personally. And work on some things. So I'm, I'm, I am going to do that. Let Sarah do what she do. Then come back, and this is where I would like to see, and say, you know, let's have a conversation about being attracted to the same sex. Now, he does not have to say, oh, God love gays. Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with liking a little opinion every now and again. No. He just has, he can he can even say in context of what he believes that homosexuality is an abomination and is a sin and I don't want to be this way and I hid for years my likening for the same gender and that caused me to make bad decisions. I think that's the win-win. Larry, how can you say it's a win-win when he still, you make it seem like that gay and homosexual? That's why they believe. Everybody's free to believe whatever they want to believe. But nobody can say they believe something and then your behavior don't support what you believe. And then you lie like you ain't got the behavior going on in your life. Now, see, that's a character problem. That's an integrity problem. And that's when I'm going to get involved in the conversation. I don't think there should be a such thing as a preacher on the down low. I'm going to say it again. I don't think there should ever be a such thing as a preacher on the down low. I don't believe that there should be a such thing as a Christian that can't tell their truth about their humanity. And the only reason this is so is because of the culture that the church, the culture that the church has created. And nobody feels like the church is safe with their secrets. Nobody feels like the church is safe for their truth. Not a good place to say I'm hurting. Not a good place to say this is what I want and this is who I am. And as a result, we have a very toxic, horrendous, predatory structure and system that people are harmed in, not truly helped in, 
and they deny, suppress, and repress aspects of their person, thinking that's what God would have them to do. But it's really what the church wants you to do. That's the issue. That's a problem. Who going to fix that? You and me. By commanding, demanding, initiating reform in religion, starting in Christianity for the Christians. That's how this is going to change. Bishop Carton Pearson was trying to tell us this, and we did not listen. Now, from the day he transitioned, we've been slapped in the face with the Pope saying we're going to at least honor same gender unions. Slapped on the other side with P. Diddy and all of the secular outlets saying your favorite American pastor, Bishop T.D. Jakes, like a little ping every now and again. And we've been forced to have a human conversation. So darn lootly. My name is Larry Reed. I'm gone. I love it. Wally beloved, love this away. I say bye. Bye. See y'all later. I'm out. Multimedia personality, comedic commentator, songwriter, recording artist, spiritual leader, author, and actor. Larry D. Reed is the founder of the MBN Network, owner of LDR Enterprises based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and the spiritual leader of the Reformation Church of Atlanta. You can catch Larry Reed on the BET Plus original series Kingdom Business and on American Gangsta Trap Queens. Streaming online at BET.plus. Patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Let me tell you why you should join. You will gain access to master level teaching and coaching, which includes Sunday morning prayer calls with Dr. Reed, Wednesday night breakdown with Dr. Reed, the prophets and care pastors, divine partnerships and networking with the like minded community, exclusive content, which includes daily posts ranging in topics that are too expensive to share on Dr. Reed's public platform, including money, health and wellness, entrepreneurship, relationships, prophecy, prayer, and more. Become a member today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live today. Church Critic by Dr. Larry D. Reed. An examination of the Larry Reed Live show perspective. Purchase a copy today by logging on to LarryReadLive.com. That's LarryReadLive.com.